Hey guys. It's the next day, morning after the first video I had, I made for the taco. I am going to get some breakfast. It's about, what time is it? About 8.15, 8.20, 39 degrees here in Houston. We're going to do a cold start and then we're going to drive to Dunkin' Donuts. I'm going to take you all for a ride on a second gen taco. This one's got over 117,000 miles right now. I'm just going to give you guys a feel of it, you know, how it rides. You know, for, for a truck having such a high mileage, you know, some people think that 116, 170,000 miles is not a lot, but it is, you know, uh, average driving for people is uh, 15,000 miles. So, eh, it's getting there. All right. Let's go start this. Sorry, I haven't had my coffee yet, so. Here's the cold start, 39 degree weather. Starts just fine. The reason why it's so loud, just like, you know, all Toyota trucks, because of the, uh, the fan belt, not the fan belt, what do you call that? The hydraulic belt, I guess. Um, unlike, for example, that QX60, it's got an electric fan. This one is connected directly to the engine. Let's let it warm up for a little bit. Usually I'll let it warm up for about 30 seconds, then I go. There's a lot of discussion out there, you know, that you gotta warm up your vehicle for at least five or 10 minutes on cold mornings. You don't have to because these things have uh, high-tech oils where they still function even in freezing conditions the oil will still flow you know that's why you have zero w30 you know five zero or five w30 five means for the winter 30 means when it's you know when it's uh, operating temperature all right let's go really no creaks or rattles with this car if you guys hear something that's usually my stuff because you know um, in the previous video you guys saw how much crap I have in this truck it's not empty you know a uh, bunch of chargers handguns and other crap that I have in here that kind of causes that rattle but still my, my point is, is that it doesn't creak or rattle um, which is good. It's got 117,000 miles. Uh, I can only compare this truck, you know, based on my other uh, trucks. In the past, I had a 2014 FX4. Uh, also had a Nissan Titan XD Pro 4X. Uh, this is Both are pretty good trucks. I, I really didn't like the Ford. Uh, FX4 because that thing had so many squeaks and rattles you know by 15,000 miles it had a bunch of squeaks and rattles uh, that annoyed the shit out of me so I traded that in after a year or two years you know and I took that vehicle to um, where did I take that vehicle to I drove it all the way to Utah and back went to the Grand Canyon as well I went to uh, Monument Valley in Utah with the F-150 you know it survived it and you know of course it's a brand new truck but man after that trip it developed so much creaks and rattles it was so annoying it drove me nuts so I got I got rid of it, it looked good that's about it Uh, the newer F-150s. My, uh, I have a buddy at work who bought one just recently. It's an XLT trim. Uh, 
I know he paid a lot of money for it because of, you know, pandemic times. Um, that thing was quick. It also rode really well. And that's a 4x4 model. That's an awesome truck. Uh, can you believe it? 4x4 XLT trucks now are selling around $45,000. That's ridiculous. Back then it was um, around 30, 33,000 uh, dollars for an XLT trim uh, 35 you know if you got a fully loaded XLT trim and the reason why is because it's cheaper back then the reason why is because Ford would do rebates uh, now they won't even do rebates because of the shortages so it's just kind of uh, it's really a ripoff Titan XD, uh, whoa, construction here. The yeah, Titan XD, I think I got it for around, I'm trying to remember how much I got it for. So I rolled over some debt from the F-150, I think it was $60,000. The payments on that thing was like $1,050 a month. I was single back then, so I could afford it. Was I single back then? Or was I married already? I don't remember. But I sold it after a while. I got tired of it. That that truck, the Nissan Titan XD, had so many issues. Especially the, the diesel one. First, the thing um, just drifted towards the right. It had such bad... Um, alignment to it you know the dealership had it for weeks and weeks and weeks put multiple tires they had the nissan engineer you know fly into houston to check it out and get it fixed i mean you know eventually they i mean after all the adjustments and all the crap that they did they um, started changing tires it helped somewhat but the first time they changed the tires they put on the wrong tires they put on tires for you know uh, a half ton truck not a, a, not a Nissan Titan XD which is basically a three quarters ton truck uh, the tires are overloaded I told them they're stupid and they want me to die for putting those tires on and the second time after they swapped it out they still screwed it up they put on um, what do you call that they put on winter tires in Texas. You know, I live in Texas. We don't use winter tires here. They were Michelin winter tires, but you know, I was just so tired of the experience. It just wore me out on a brand new truck. I said, fuck it. Just leave the winter tires on there. I'll drive through them. And then, you know, not only that, but the truck also would um, have hard shifting, which is a very well documented issue. The transmission on that thing, even though it's an ASIN transmission, was a piece of shit. Uh, it shifted too hard. You know, sometimes it would shift good, very smooth. But, you know, it just would shift weird. Um, also, it would kill the engine. Uh, it, it'd give you a dead pedal because I, I guess the uh, the engine and the, uh, the transmission wasn't correctly tuned that's why it would hesitate and it would hesitate for over a second you know when you needed to accelerate real fast with your merging through traffic uh, yeah that would cost you an, that would cause an accident and that's a very well documented issue so after a while with dealing with it the transmission the tires I just I said screw it I don't want to deal with this crap anymore so I got rid of it I got a uh, QX80 Limited. I had a minivan back then too. I had a QX80 Limited. You know, traded the truck in and the minivan. I figured just one vehicle save me some money. So that's what I did. All right, we're gonna get some coffee here and Dunkin' Donuts. I like Dunkin' Donuts better than Starbucks because first, I think it tastes better. Starbucks is a little, little sour in my opinion. This one's a little more mild, and the coffee I think is stronger for a much less price.
Uh, let me get a large coffee, please. A large coffee? Yeah, make that actually extra large. Sorry. Okay. You want cream and sugar in it, sir? Yeah, let me get cream and sugar and a mocha swirl, please. Okay, so now typically it would come with five creams, five sugars, and five pumps of the swirl. Is that going to yeah. be okay, or is that too much, or? Heck yeah, let's do it. Okay, so five creams, five sugars, and five... <laughs> yeah. You said mocha, right? Yeah, please. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Do you good. care for anything for breakfast? Uh, nope. All right. We'll see you at the window. You got it. Wow. That sounded like diabetes. It's going to be awesome. All right. Let's see if I brought my car. Yep, I did. You know, um, since I live in Texas, it really doesn't matter if this thing had heated seats and uh, heated steering wheel, it's not too bad. But I can imagine if uh, you live in a northern state, yeah, those things would be awesome. I don't think the uh, second gens have those, maybe the limited models, if, if there is such a thing. I know the, uh, the newer tacos have them. So. All right, thank you. Before, you know, with my LS430, that thing had horrible cup holders. It always feel like it's gonna break off. This thing is so much nicer with real cup holders. You know, I have three uh, cup holders here in the center console, and then I think I have four on each, I'm sorry, two on each door. I just have so many cup holders. That's why I love trucks. Not sure about the forerunner still, maybe they do have them. But I was looking into those forerunners, man. They're really nice. And they have more horsepower than the tacos, but I needed a truck with a bed. You know, that's the biggest thing. Uh, you know, and if I had to compromise with the bed, and you know, that's a big compromise. Uh, still the uh Forerunners are way too expensive right now for something with a similar condition of this like this taco uh, They want thirty five thousand dollars at least for a forerunner I'm like man, you're you're out of your mind with thirty five thousand dollars. That's like uh, Like almost a brand new price and that thing's like five seven years old man They just want too much for those Toyotas I'm sure you get your money's worth and it'll run for a long time, but shit, it's way too much. People are still buying them though. I mean, they're all sold out. They're hard to find. I guess people don't really care, especially now that the interest rates are so low. So the feds are loaning the banks, I think, 
at zero percent uh, and banks are loaning lending money at you know according to your your financial um, uh, status right now I think uh, if you have good credit they'll start lending at four percent for used cars ten percent if you have bad credit refinance this truck uh, when I signed up for when I bought this truck I was by myself uh, I have pretty good credit I'm at 28% credit card utilization at $42,000 7-Eleven credit score is it 7-Eleven? no it's more than that I think 716 um, but uh, would have been better with a cosigner so I'll refinance with my wife and hopefully get it down to a 4% before the feds raise their interest rates this year. Should be coming up by February during tax return. They always sneak something like that in when everyone's happy with their, you know, getting their tax refunds. So they're going to raise their rates. They're going to have to because inflation is out of control. All right, so, so far so good. I like how this truck sits pretty high. I mean, it's stock form. I'm gonna leave it like that for a while. Uh, I guess I'm gonna be using this to commute back and forth. Um, and it's, it's a pain in the ass to have a lifted truck. It won't fit in the garage too. If you guys want uh, the old school truck that's very solid, no creaks and rattles, it's got almost uh, 120,000 miles, and you get a second gen Tacoma. And you know, compared to the third gens, the third gens have a lot of uh, transmission issues, and the reports are saying that most of its power band is it's up on the higher RPM ranges, which is terrible for trucks because. Most of the time, trucks are going for the torque. They're not really going that fast, and people don't want to rev the piss out of their trucks. So, get a second gen if you can deal with the basic, uh, you know, features and the whatever. But they're reliable, uh, much more reliable than the third gens with their transmission issues. I don't know why Toyota put a 3.5 liter. Uh, engine on that thing. I, I guess they were trying to meet the EPA ratings or something. This one's got a five speed, the newer one's got a six speed. I have to say, the five speed is more than enough. Um, it's actually smoother than I thought. Um, and this is directly coming from the LS 430, which is pretty much legendary when it comes to you know smooth rides and powertrain. Yeah, this transmission for the uh, second gen Tacomas are pretty damn smooth, I have to say, which really surprised me. And these have, I think, the same transmission as the uh, the newer uh, and current Forerunner models. So, yeah, if you go on YouTube, people always mod their transmissions for the third gen Tacos. They put a, a tuner on it. You know, it, that means it's it's got issues with the powertrain. This one I can just barely put my foot down, even though it's got one only 236 horsepower. It makes up for it with the throttle response. Uh, the torque is more than enough. I guess if you put bigger tires and lift this thing, yeah, you you probably want to regear it. As, as it stands now, it's fine. I'm sorry, third gen taco owners. I'm just saying the truth. My buddy's got one. He bought one of those uh, TRD long bed, uh, TRD off road long bed when it first came out. I think he spent $45,000 or $44,000 for a brand new one back in 2016. He got a nice one too, the, uh, like the sand color. He, after six months, he he ended up getting rid of it. He 
because the transmission would just shift erratically. He has it on cruise control and it would just keep shifting back and forth uh, because I guess the engine doesn't have too many, too much power or low end torque. And that's, uh, he drives in Texas, so, I mean, that tells you something, Texas is mostly flat. So the seats on this thing is uh, pretty well padded, you know. I like that. I, I I would, you know, for seat comfort as far as padding, I got I got a fat ass. I'm heavy. I'm fat. Um, I think they're as comfortable as the uh, uh, Chevy uh, truck that I drove to Colorado and back, and and that's excellent. The, uh, the back seat, the front back seat could be better though. I think they went more for durability than comfort for the, you know, for the lumbar support for this car. Could be more softer, could have more support. All right. I was looking at Frontiers too, but then um, I remembered those things have horrible turning radius kind of eliminates the purpose of having a smaller truck you know if you got shitty turning radius i don't know about the newer ones though the ones that just came out those might have good turning radius but i know for a fact the older ones they don't it turns like a, a nissan titan the uh oh my god one of the things that i hate about the xd that, that truck, you know, when it felt like working correctly, amazing. Now, the turning radius on that Titan. Oh my God, that's horrible. All right, we're home. We'll go drink my coffee and start working. I'm still work from home because I had COVID. I got the symptoms started showing up on Christmas evening. And then they put me on uh, ISO or quarantine for 10 days. I've already infected everyone in the family. This Omicron variant is just extremely uh, transmissible. Uh, I mean, half my family is uh, fully vaccinated with the boosters too. So, I mean, even if you have the boosters, that shit don't work against this Omicron. So, you might as well get it now, get it over with. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching.